good afternoon we are going to start on the trade secret session now uh, so uh, with me in the panel are uh, tusha i'll just request uh, all of our panelists to introduce themselves tusha uh, malhotra from anand and anand yeah good afternoon everyone my name is tusha malhotra i am working as partner at anand and anand presently my next panelist is pooja datta Our next panelist is Vidya. Hi, I am uh, Vidya Bhushan Mehresh, uh, <laughs> partner with Lexobis, and I hope you have an enjoyable session this afternoon. Uh, hi, everyone. Mic is too far. So, um, <laughs> my name is Mike Sirish Tamara. Feel free to call me Sirish. okay so good afternoon everyone uh, it is our challenge that after lunch uh, how I, uh, we can evac you so the uh, what we thought of that we may ask you the questions from the audience so it should be more participative than uh, uh, that only we can give the lectures here this is not that kind of session but for for as a start i will browse through a couple of slides to put the context in the context and uh, then i'll go to the panelists they will talk and then they will throw the questions to you and uh, then we can start talking on that correct right? okay the uh, what i have thought of that in the trade secret the few slides will be talking on the trade secret parts the definitions and basic concepts and all these things then i will going to talk on that how that is pan in india today as on today the next few slides will be how we can manage how usually the indian corporation manage inside uh, inside of that one and the third and the last few slides will be on the challenges and then we'll open up to the all the panelists okay okay the trade secret protection in india so uh, to keep the context in right uh, i don't know how many of you aware on the ip related subject matters but uh, that's why that i'm keeping this one this is just a simple coca cola bottle so in india most of the times we have in if you go to any indian co corporations any indian companies you will see that they will tell that i have two patents i have five patents i have 10 patents that's all that that means the protection for them for their product to keep that context a sim a product has am amalgamation of all kinds of ipr rights that we need to protect in various ways here the copyright and the trademark the logos and names has been registered as a copyright and trademark the functionality the functional improvement which has been protected under the patent law the recipe here is protected under the trade secrets and the design part the bottle design and the industrial design so those are protected under the design law so now we'll keep only focus on the trade secret part today in this session okay so what is trade secret any kind which is technical commercial financial strategic logistical scientific human resource etc everything you can talk about the trade secrets what are the features of the trade secret it should not be known to others not generally known to the relevant business circles or to the public it should have economic value and it should maintain the secrecy if these three things are there then that is called we call as a trade secret so there is a trade part means economic value and the secrecy part so with that marrying with those two things we are talking about the trade secret but now the next slide i am going to talk on the confidential information because many times people talk on the confidential informations and the trade secrets in the same way so i'll just try to distinguish between these two words two names what is confidential information and what is the trade secrets 
confidential information is generally limited to a single or primary event in the conduct of the business, whereas the trade secret is a process or device for continuous use in the operation of a business. So factors used for the court to determine whether information is a trade secret, generally it is the extent to which the information known to the outside the owner's business, even within the business also, that how many people knows those kind of uh, informations, that also subject matter. The extent to which his employees and the officers in this business know it, the extent of measure taken by the corporation to guard the secrecy of the information, the value of information to him and his competitors, the ease or difficulty with which the information may be legally acquired by others, the amount of time, skill, effort, capital, etc. that has been put to develop that information. So if you look to these six points, I'll just throw one question to now to the audience. How many, if you uh, don't, how many are few from corporates here? Anyone is here from the corporates? One. Okay, anyone is the law, lawyers, the law firms? You are working with the corporates, correct? So how many of you are working with the corporates? Okay. Okay, can you tell one, uh, any one of you that all these six points, whether it is followed today in India? Are we following any of these? The information, the secrecy part of the information, this means it is a limited access to the employees, limited access to that one. Then the management, management perspective, and the effort and skill gone through to develop that information. Yes, no. 60%, 10%, 5%. How many of you believe that Indian corporations or those who are working with the multinationals also in India? Between 0 to 40%, at least minimum 0 to 40% they are maintaining of all these six. That means 0 to 40 percent means out of six, maybe two. Two questions, they are following that. So as a lawyer, I'm your lawyer, correct? Yes, I'm a patent lawyer. Okay, patent lawyer. Okay, suppose you are going to the court. I'm not a lawyer, okay? But 20 years I'm in the IP front. So when you are in the court, now your employee left. He has a contract. Contract. He has the employee agreement. He left and joined the other company. The immediately the court will going to ask that what information he has still, correct? Yes. So the company has said these are the information he has still. Now the court will going to ask, okay, fine, is it a secret? Secret information that he is stealing, or is it public? So the slowly the liability will come to the corporation. They will tell that no, it is a secret. Then they will go into the how it is secret. So where is that how and how it is managed, why it is secret, how many people knows that? So those management possibilities is there or not? Yes. So that corporate maybe is keeping that, that your client may be keeping that one as a secret. So I'm just asking that how many corporates and all these things they are keeping that one as a secret. Now I'll come to the next slide where I'll talk about that what is the financial, uh, what is the trade secret. 
the types of the certificate, it can be a financial information, it can be technical and scientific information, it can be negative information. Very important it is. It can be negative information, means I am developing certain products or certain services and failed. We failed, correct? The corporate gives, uh, spends lots of lots of money on the, on the, the failed processes. So those loss, those negative information is also a trade secret. That is not, means abundant. So that also that if someone takes that one and gives to the other company, that is also trade secret violation. The next is the commercial information also. Okay. So if you can elaborate that case. So the essential element there pleaded uh, by the law firm which lost the people was that uh, the people who are moving out have been taking away important commercial information pertaining to the law firm and therefore they must be giving an undertaking that uh, they will not use any of the information that has been, that they have been privy to while being with uh, the previous law firm and that was upheld by the Delhi High Court. Okay, great. So this is uh, some examples of the trade secrets, some more examples like test data of the drugs, computer software, computer hardware, invention disclosed in, pending unpublished patent applications, business plans and strategies, new product names, etc. Customer lists, sales data, financial projections, all these are basically our trade secrets. But only because if we can fulfill all these six criteria, then it can be as a trade secrets. So what is there in India? So this is a recent study that top 500 companies in Indian companies. If you just see that how those things are protected today, as on today, it is, you can see the goodwill is 10.1%, patents 1.2%, copyrights 18.5%, trademark 6.4%, know-how 17.9%, brands 5.8%, software 12.5%, undisclosed 0 0.5 and design and drawing is 24.5. So you can see the lot of things like know-how, brands, designs, licenses, etc. Those are actually the, the assets, the intangible assets and uh, how we can protect those kind of things. So uh, now I'll slowly come into that one, what are the protections available here. So till now in India there is a couple of cases, couple of cases are there on the trade secrets. Out of that, the civil procedure code is 20. Out of the specific relief act, the trade secret when it, it, it went to the court and the court has given certain verdicts for the trade secrets under the different acts and different laws. Not because there is a lack of, there is no trade secret law in India. So this session is also, will uh, we will going to ask all of you that whether we need a trade secret law specifically like in US. Okay. Now there is uh, uh, some enforcing state secret in India, no legislation governing state secrets, protection by way of contracts mainly, recognition of legal rights in state secrets by courts of law invoking the equitable jurisdictions. Past cases show attempts to combine causes of action with violation of statutory IPRs. Other statutes such as IT Act is also relied on. Some more on that. The specific relief act and the civil of uh, the code of civil procedure are relevant in enforcing contractual obligations under a trade secrecy agreement. Contract act governs the validity and enforceability of the agreements in general, and arbitration is the preferred route to the resolve the uh, disputes. As on today, what is happening in India, I'm just giving that scenario. Research revealed that 21 reported cases related to the trade secrets. It is, the strategy is a bit, uh, bit old. It is 2010 statistics. Of the 21 cases, 20 related to the breach of confidentiality by the employees. At least one case uh, each attached to the Information Technology Act, the Indian Penal Code, the Arbitration and Conciliation Act, and the Designs Act. No reported case offers a definition of the trade secrets per se. 
At least one case in the Delhi High Court invoked a wider equitable jurisdiction and awarded the injunction even in the absence of the contract. So what are the uh, advantages and disadvantages? So no leg advantage, no legislation, therefore no registration is uh, registration cost. Immediate effect, no other submissive requirements, no disclosure requirement, no written description. Disadvantage, difficult to maintain uh, uh, for the longer period, limited scope of the protection, et cetera, et cetera. Now the next question will ask that what are the, these are the recent studies that what I have done, that national IP strategy you have, I think all of you have the draft policy, national IP policy, correct? That has been uh, there to the public for all of us opinion. And in that part, uh, in that, uh, give me that. Yeah, this is the draft policy of uh, uh, National Intellectual Property Rights Policy, NIPB, Government of India. That draft has been published to the public for your opinion. And there is only one clause, 3.1, is dedicated for the trade secrets. Not much on that. So there is a lot of scope on the trade secrets parts because it is it is uh, there is no trade secret laws in india which required but other than that there are couple of other new policies which is drafted in 2011 2012 so you see in the national manufacturing policy uh, national competition policy everywhere there is a ip clauses has been introduced uh, not per se the trade secret clauses but ip clauses has been in sebi uh, section 49 this is almost equivalent to the sox compliance so everywhere now the IP is coming into that one. So it will be enforced maybe uh, at, um, maybe very soon, more and more. Another thing is coming into the accounting principle. Indian gap is also changing according to the IFRS standards. So where mandatorily the intellectual asset also has to be disclosed. So those things when it will be enforced, then more and more this kind of, because majority as you see from the majority of the Indian corporation, uh, they mainly in the IT and the other sectors, they protect their their assets, intellectual assets, uh, 